So if you have plantar fasciitis, a lot of people will tell you that you need to correct pronation and that pronation is horrible and evil and bad. And it is true that pronation can be bad if it's excessive, but pronation is a very good, healthy, normal movement. So in this video, we're going to talk about the root causes of excessive pronation and how that can cause plantar fasciitis. So before we talk about the root causes of excessive pronation, we're going to talk about what pronation actually is. And it's a very subtle movement, but it involves a lot of joints because there's a lot of joints in the foot. So every time you walk, the arch collapses just a little bit. And that's kind of what pronation is. Pronation technically is movement of quite a few joints and it gets really complex if you talk about that. But all you really need to know is that the arch collapses a little bit and then the lower leg bone tibia internally rotates and then it rebounds. So right when you hit the floor, it's supinated and the arch is risen. And then right when the big toe makes it down, the arch collapses and you pronate and then you push off and then it supinates again and then you know you you keep walking and you want the arch to collapse a little bit with every step so that you can dissipate forces into the tissues and you can actually absorb the shock from the ground but what we do not want is somebody walking around in an excessive pronation position all day long. That will cause tension on the plantar fascia because it means that these muscles down here are not supporting the arch of the foot. And when the muscles aren't doing it, the plantar fascia will. So you will have excessive tensional force and it can cause or be a factor in the development of the weakening of the tissues of the plantar fascia until you have plantar fasciitis. So the first cause has to do with modern footwear and how modern footwear puts the toes into this position. What happens when you put the toes in this position, you automatically put the foot into a position that favors pronation. See how when the big toe and this toe is all compressed, this thing can rotate inward. If you spread out the toes, especially the big toe, watch this. When it's pronated and the big toe's this way, it's easy to have excessive pronation. But when I move the big toe over, you get an external rotation on the tibia and the arch rises instantly. So when the toes are spread, you do not have excessive pronation. The arch muscles start firing and it gets stronger down here and you will not have that excessive tensional force on the plantar fascia. Also keep in mind that when you push the big toe over, it instantly stretches a big muscle that goes from the heel to to the big toe and when this thing is stretched you're going to have tension on the side of the foot the problem with this tension is that you have a blood supply that runs underneath the inside of the ankle and this thing supplies the plantar fascia with nutrients and it takes takes waste out of the plantar fascia and then brings it back up to the heart and this blood supply is what's responsible for the plantar fascia being able to get raw material so it can fix itself so if this toe is stretched inward you're going to have less nutrients and waste coming in and out of the tissues of the plantar fascia and you will start a cascade effect that can cause degeneration. So if the toes are spread, this muscle starts firing and will start pumping nutrients and waste in and out of the plantar fascia, which will increase healing drastically. So in order to fix this problem, there are toe spreading devices and I list them on my website. I also have toe spreading socks, correct toes, all sorts of other different devices. And when you get your toes spread, you will have your arch rise and you're gonna have a less likelihood of excessive pronation. The next root cause of excessive pronation is wearing a shoe where the front of the foot is lifted. A lot of running shoes are not flat and the toes are lifted up. And so the problem with this is look, if you lift up the toes, you're going to instantly stretch the muscles of the arch. And when the muscles are stretched, if any muscle is stretched, it's going to be weaker. And so if your foot is in a shoe that is always stretching the arch muscles, the arch muscles are going to be weak. It's going to compromise the integrity of the arch. You will have a position that favors excessive pronation. And how you fix this is obviously wearing a shoe that is completely flat. And also in the front with the toe spreading, you need a shoe that has a lot of room up in the front. You need a very wide toe box that will accommodate for your toe. Take notice that if this floor is flat, like this floor that my foot's on right now, I can contract my arch muscles a lot. Like you can 
contract them on demand. If your toes are lifted up, it is very hard to do that. I mean, I can still do it because I really work out my feet a lot because I don't want to get plantar fasciitis again, but it's very difficult when the feet and the toes are completely flat, especially the heel. If the heel is grounded, this thing can, I mean, you can really tense these muscles very easily. And if the arch muscles are strong and this arch is supported with the muscles themselves, then you're going to have less stress on the plantar fascia. The next root cause of excessive pronation is going to be dysfunctional pelvic positioning or tilt. And so when you sit down in a chair all day and you're in this position, what happens is the pelvis tilts forward and also all the muscles have to recompensate and change their length so that it will accommodate for this position. When your muscles are in a position for long enough, they really start to conform to that position and they make it permanent. And this is very bad because the moment you stand up, your pelvis will be tilted forward. And a lot of people have this. So when I'm sitting down right now, you can see that my calf muscle and my hamstring are short because the knee joint is bent. So when I stand up, after sitting down all day, my hamstrings and my calves are going to be tight. Also, if I have a shoe that has an elevated heel and I'm sitting down all day, my calf is instantly shortened. That's really, really bad. So when you sit down all day, what will happen is that the front of the pelvis will shift forward and down, and then the back of the pelvis will go up. And so what happens is that you're going to have a, a tilt like this, and you're going to have a mild arch in your back. Your hip flexors will be a bit tight. And what's happening is, is it's stretching out your stomach and stretching out your glutes. And so you will always be in this position. And people that walk around like this, you'll see that they like to waddle about because it makes the knees go inward. And then when the knees go inward, then your arches collapse, and you cannot have that. It also puts an unneeded amount of rotation on the femur and also on the lower leg bones. So having the pelvis in a neutral position will assure that your arches are going to be strong and that your muscles and your feet are going to fire properly because they're working within their range of motion and the knees will be instantly more stable. So in order to correct pelvis posture, start walking, stop sitting down all day, um, walk instead of driving your car, try to find ways of getting around without sitting in a chair all day long. If you really want to correct this fast, you're going to have to stretch out the hip flexors, stretch out the back muscles, strengthen the glutes with like squats or some other kind of exercise, and strengthen the abdominals. So when you strengthen the abdominals and you strengthen the glutes, you're going to have a tilt that's more posterior. You do not want excessive posterior tilt where your lower back is rounded like this, but you need it enough so that it's neutral. Most people are going to be in this position where there's an arch in their back and they kind of waddle about like that. So for most people watching this video, you're going to have to focus on getting your pelvis neutral. There's lots of videos on this. Um, releasing the psoas major and also releasing the back muscles will really situate the bone into a good position. But holding it for a long time, you're going to have to get your, your abdominal strong and your glutes strong. And that's just through using them, through walking. Walking is a great exercise for your glutes. It keeps everything within their healthy range of motion and will position that pelvis in a, very in a very stable position that will favor proper foot mechanics. You need the pelvis to be in a good position so that the knees rotate properly so that your foot can actually work accordingly. If not, you're not going to have good foot posture. You need the pelvis to be lined up properly first. The next root cause of excessive pronation is going to be wearing a shoe that is too cushioned. I don't have an example of it, but when you watch somebody walk with like a Hoka shoe or something that's really cushioned where there's like this much cushion on the bottom, watch their ankles. If their ankles are collapsed, inward, there's a good chance that they have excessive pronation. They might have ankle instability issues and maybe a motion control shoe might help, but those people really need to focus on arch muscle strength. Um, you should be able to wear a cushioned shoe if your foot muscles are strong. If you've worn modern day footwear and they're weak and then you wear a very cushioned shoe, you are asking for plantar fasciitis to develop. You are putting the foot into that excessive pronation all the time and it's not strong when it's in that position. So you need to fix this. You need to not have cushioned shoes that are excessively cushioned. So avoid excessive cushioned shoes and make sure that obviously the to wide toe box, flat shoe, all the other things that we talked about earlier.
Another cause of excessive pronation is Morton's toe. And so that means that this toe right here is going to be longer than this one. Mine is not, you can see that it's not. But if it's even a millimeter past my big toe, that means that this bone right here, the second metatarsal is going to be longer than the first metatarsal. And so that means that this head, this joint is going to be extending past the big toe joint. If they line up and they're even, then that's good. But if this thing's extending past, what happens is this, that this joint will take a lot of grunt force whenever you're walking, and it also puts the foot into a position that favors pronation. And so what we wanna do to correct this is that it's very simple to correct, and a lot of people don't know about it that have this, and they can suffer a lot of pain. It can cause back pain, knee pain, hip pain, everything, foot pain, and so, in order to correct this, you just put a pad right under the big toe joint. And so what this will do is it will make it so that this thing's hitting the ground as much as this joint right here. Um, and all you need is a little tiny foam pad. And, it, and you do not want the, the and you do not want the actual pad to extend far over here. You just want a little tiny piece of foam or leather or something small right here. It doesn't even be, have to be, it doesn't have to be special at all. I've seen people take folded up pieces of paper and they'll tape it on their insoles and their shoe and it'll cover just the big toe joint right here. You do not want the pad to go over here or on the big toe joint. It has to be right here on the big toe joint and that will correct it. But you also have to think, what is Morton's toe and why is it occurring and why is it dysfunctional? A lot of people with Morton's toe, it's a developmental disorder and it shows that there's other issues in the body. Um, Morton's toe, everybody that has it cannot um, activate vitamin B6 into its active form, which is P5P. And so if you have Morton's toe and you have plantar fasciitis, but you also have all these other issues, pain issues, fibromyalgia, so on and so forth, look into P5P supplementation because you cannot turn B6 into the active form. And if you have a B6 deficiency, you're gonna have nerve problems, you're gonna have all sorts of different faults. So look into Morton's toe. If, if your toe, if this one extends past the big toe, start Google searching because there's a lot of stuff to learn about this and you should correct it now so that you can fix it in the long term as soon as possible. Another root cause is if your hip is externally rotated or if you have what's called tibial torsion and your foot is out. So when you stand there, look down at your feet. If they're pointing forward or if they're about right here, that's healthy and good and fine. But if one of your foot is out like this all the time or if you used to be in ballet and you always stand like this, you are more than sure that there's gonna be excessive pronation. Like whenever you have excessive external rotation at the hip or down here on the tibia in the torsion of the tibia and how it developed, then you're going to have a higher likelihood of that excessive pronation. So you can fix this by pointing your feet forward, but it might make you really sore. And so what I suggest is looking at videos on YouTube on how to release the piriformis muscle with the lacrosse ball, and it's deep inside your hip, but you just need to rub it out, and it should really help with that excessive external rotation. And um, you want them to be facing forward, but it's not required. It's seriously, having it about 10 to 15 degrees out like that is totally fine and healthy. And I actually prefer this, especially for like squats and stuff. It, it feels really good in this position for me. There are also some coordination faults that people are born with or that they develop, and th that can lead to excessive pronation. But if they're in that position, they probably have a lot of other health things going on. And they're probably talking to a physical therapist that's helping them with that, because some of those things you can't really help that much. Some people that have certain brain injuries and stuff like that, you will see that they their knees are inward and that their arches are collapsed and they waddle about like this. And there's not really a whole lot that you can do for those. So after you get shoes that are flat, wide toe box, and all the other things that I talk about in my videos, you should really start working on strengthening your feet. So check out that video on how to strengthen feet, my three easy steps to achieve this. And then after that, after you start getting your feet back and your plantar fascia is gone and your foot muscles are getting stronger, then you really need to start working on strengthening the feet on different terrains. And, you know, walking up and down sand hills, stuff like that. Once those muscles are strong, you 
you will not have excessive pronation. But if you put your feet bones into a position that favors it and then you hold it there for years, it's gonna be stuck in that position and it can take years to undo it. So make sure that all these changes that you make with your feet are slow and gradual over time because doing too much too soon can also cause problems. I hope this video helped. I try to cover as much as I can about this topic. Let me know if you have any questions though or if anything didn't make sense. And thank you so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.